the show where there are no penalties, nothing is offside, and everything is fair game. This is The Gloves Are Off. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Gloves Are Off. I'm Moses Wildo and we've got a great show for you from the Lloydminster Bobcats to Jersey ads because I know a few of the people here on our show definitely love them. I mean that in quotations by love. And, of course, what's going on in the NFL, CFL, Durant, quarterback situation, Matt Nichols starting for the Eskimos, etc. But first, let's get to our guest and co-host, Greg Buchanan. How's it going? Not too bad, Moses. And pleased to be joined by Claire Hanna once again, of course, a Jersey enthusiast. And we'll tell you <laughs> more in a second. But first, we're going to talk about uh, something local and Lloyd Minster Bobcats. How about them, eh? Uh, you got to admit that this is a team that we knew was going to be competitive uh, somewhere in the top three. I don't know if maybe it was a ruse by the coaching staff saying, you know what, that's our aim, nothing higher. But yet internally, there's a lot of belief with this, within this team that they are a number one team in the AJHL North. And they proved that somewhat. They're still behind, six points behind with the game in hand towards the Spruce Grove Saints, who they beat the night before. Guys, is this a team that is a legit contender for the top spot in the AJHL North? Claire. Well, this is an interesting question, and I've been talking to, and I'm coining them G-Unit, Gord and Gary, and <laughs> we've seen their defense doing a lot offensively recently, but we still haven't seen their big guys, you know, Taylor Mulder, making a lot of points on the offense side, so I think that if you can get that part of the team really firing and really producing some points, we are going to see that team, but we haven't really seen that yet. Um, can they get that going? I think we'll have to see that in the next little while. And recently picking up Patrick Geary was a re big reason why he was a welcome addition to the team. Guy could provide some offense, especially bang uh, in front of the net. Yeah, I think Patrick adds a lot. I think Patrick comes on board and he's a good two-way player too. Don't forget he's good mm -hmm. defensively. Uh, the thing that I question for the, the Bobcats right now, and it's probably an area concern right from the get-go this season, is they don't have a go-to guy up front. They don't have three or four guys that are aligned that you know what, you put them on the ice and they're bound to get a, you know, a couple of points per night. Uh, they don't really have that. They're, they're, right now they're scoring by committee and that's fine. Uh, but in the end, when you get into that, those seven game series, you really need go-to guys. You need your power play clicking. They're a hard working team, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. They take care of their own end, like Gord coaches and Gary coaches very well. But at the same time, you do need a little offensive punch. Could we possibly see that within this group? Maybe somebody kind of take the reins? A, a case in point, talk about a guy who was a leader uh, goal scoring offensively was Austin McDonald last mm -hmm. year. Him and Tanner Dunkel really paved the way when it came down to needing goals at the last second. They were the guys that you knew they were going to perform. Can we see something internally? Or do they maybe have to make a trade somewhere down the line? Of course, the trade deadline January 10th. Yeah, in early and, January, and, that is. and the thing is, when you get into trades like this and, and you're building, you have to think about it. You're not just building for this year. You're building for a very big year next year when they host RBC. So what you're going to give up is possible young talent to get something for right now. So you have to think, do you want to trade for right now, which could jeopardize a player that could be part of your team come next year? You know, that's a lot of things you have to keep in mind. Do you want to win now or are you more concentrated to win next year? I know right now they want to do both, and that's fine and dandy, but at the same time, at what price do you want to pay for it? Well, do you think they need an extra goal scorer, Claire? Well, we haven't seen a lot of goal scoring by the typical goal scorers. Mm -hmm. So, but I like your point, Gary, thinking about the RBC Cup, thinking ahead. One thing I would ponder, and I actually asked Gary this in an interview once, is when in the dressing room does somebody like Devin Green, who's been incredible, really holding them in this position, when does he say something like, hey guys, do your job, I'm doing my job, you know, like start getting some goals, start making it look like I'm at, like, like we're a winning team, does that make sense? So anyways, Gary gave me kind of like an around the bush answer to that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is, well, you know what, he's playing safe because they're playing great defensively, yep. it's kind of masking a few things. We'll see how it progresses through the season. It'll be interesting if they do get that goal score later this year or someone will emerge as that leader as you suggested, Claire. How about let's move on to another leader, Darian Durant, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. CFL West Division semifinal will kick off on Sunday afternoon, and that will be a good one. 2.30 is when they'll have the pregame, three or two o'clock, sorry. Excuse me, I'm thinking Saskatchewan time here. I'm still stuck on that. Mountains change, of course. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, they are playing in the afternoon against the Edmonton Eskimos, and of course, both teams uh, injured starting quarterbacks. It looks like Mike Riley's a little worse for, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, worse for wear 
and you have Matt Nickel, uh, Matt Nichols, that is, taking over. What's going to happen here in this situation, knowing that, say, if both backup quarterbacks go in, Kerry Joseph, Matt Nichols, who gets the edge, the Eskimos or the Riders? So we're coming down to quarterbacks here, yeah. hey? Yes. Well, oh, I was actually thinking more if the Mike Riley and um, Darren Durant are healthy. But, okay, we'll go back to Kerry Joseph and Matt Nichols. I think that the Eskimos still have the edge. Last week we saw Kerry Joseph versus Matt Nichols, and yes, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders did win, except for the Eskimos left a lot of their bench out. We didn't see Bowman in the lineup, and they still gave a big run for their money. I think they got 330 yards, something like that, on the ground. So if it comes down to those facts alone, I'm going to give the Eskimos the edge, and they're not in Saskatchewan, where Saskatchewan Riders fans are crazy and they have that home advantage. I know there's going to be a lot of Rider fans, yes, in Edmonton, but still, it's a difference maker to me, and so I think the Eskimos will have the edge. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Like, I know Mike Riley, he's not even running. Like, he's not even, he's throwing the ball, and that's about it. He's standing there throwing the ball. Darren Durant uh, didn't really make any passes over 20 yards last week in practice. He got first team reps so far this week. So, there is a chance that he may get the start, more of a better chance that he may come in later in the game. And if he does come in later, if you're a Riders fan, it's for all the wrong reasons because things aren't going well. So I, I think the old man Carey's probably going to get the start. Nichols will be starting for the Edmonton. And as much as it hurts me to save with my rider heart, but I, I got to think the Eskimos have the upper hand. Okay, uh, so if the Eskimos do get the upper hand in this case, they take on the Calgary Stampeders. Who wins out in that edge then? We were talking about the history of this in the uh, office the other day about how Calgary just can't beat the Eskimos in that Western Conference final. Except for, I think this is the year for Calgary. I think they are just hungry. John Cornish was out most of the season. He's been back. He's been awesome. I'm, I'm not sure. He, I know he was back or injured in the two games ago. But I still think that Calgary's really, really hungry. I believe I Mitchell wants it. They all want it. I think this is the time they're going to actually beat them. If Calgary doesn't win the West final, guaranteed things will blow up in Calgary because they don't care what they did in July, August, September, October. It's what you do now that matters in Calgary. And if they don't win now, it's done in Calgary. I, I don't want to say Huff's job's on the line, but Huff's job's on the line. <laughs> well, especially when you have Dave Dickinson, who's been yeah. a really good yeah. offensive coordinator. He's due for a job as well. How about this very quickly? Hamilton Tiger Cats, undefeated since they opened up Tim Horton's field. They look really good. Talk about one of the top teams, uh, not to mention the Montreal Alouettes as well, have kind of merged with Jonathan Crompton behind center. If you have the BC Lions, if they get past BC, Montreal, they go into Hamilton, even though they got destroyed in the final game of the regular season uh, for them. Do you see Hamilton, or do you see Montreal, that is, making it to the Grey Cup over Hamilton, even though they'd no, have to no. go through that staunch, I guess, defense yeah. and look at Zach Caleros and what he's been doing? Yeah. Um, Hamilton's defense is lights out. Who's kidding who? I think their offense has, has been good, has been fantastic. I think Montreal, with Crompton at quarterback, they've been doing it with smoke and mirrors. You know, honestly, they're not as good. You don't as, think Deron Carter is no. uh, deserving of an All Star award? You, uh, yeah, he is, but their quarterback is is average at best. Come on, their offense is catered around his skill set, and they're doing within what he can do. But at the same time, Hamilton will destroy Montreal. It'll be Hamilton in the Grey Cup against the Eskies. It's interesting. I actually see Hamilton as a bit of like a KC team from the major leagues. Um, they're They've made some good acquisitions. You know, they've got Grigsby, who came from Winnipeg. Um, they're really hungry for the win. And I see them going into this. Um, the last time that they had 10 people in the All-Star um, nomination, or, or sorry, making the All-Star team was in 1999, which is the year they won the Grey Cup. So I think we're seeing some similarities. I'm not saying they're going to win the Grey Cup, but I think they actually will go pretty deep, and I could see them in the uh, Grey Cup final. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we return, we're going to talk about the Toronto Argonauts and their lack of a home in the next few years, of course. It's Jersey ads. We see them in the CFL. Might see them in the NHL. Who knows? Tell more coming up. <laughs> 